Go to Pinterest and search for paper cutout art. Select the one you like the most and download it. Open up Blender and save time by adding your reference while you are in front view. So you won't have to rotate the image unnecessarily. Scale it up a bit so it's easier to work on the smaller pieces. Add a circle or a bezier curve. To fill it, switch to 2D and select a mode from here. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Go to edit mode and select every point with A. Hit X to delete them. Switch to draw mode and start tracing out the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because the AI will fix it. No, no AI, just kidding, you are gonna fix it. When you are close to the starting point, release the pencil. Click on cyclic to join the last and the first point. And you can also tweak the error slider to get different results. Hey, guys in the future, you can use the curve pen tool as well. If you accidentally release the pencil, don't worry, keep going, don't stop, start drawing a new line. And when you finish, don't click on the cyclic button. Switch back to cursor, select the points where the gap is and hit F. If you feel the last gap as well, the whole thing fills up. Let's continue tweaking the shape. Switch to X-ray mode and choose cursor select. Zoom in. Oh, the line is gone. To fix it, go to object mode with tab and pull it away from the image on the y-axis with G. To see better what you are doing, click on the image in object mode and turn down the opacity. Now finally, we can start adjusting these points. You can rotate them with R, scale them with S or just hit G to do all these transformations with one button. There are three control points. If you select the middle one, the whole thing moves. If you select the one on the side, you can tweak that handle individually. I mean, not exactly, because the other side moves with it, so you cannot make a sharp corner, for example. To do that, select the middle point and set the handle type to vector or free. The hotkey is V. A few useful tips. Tip number one. If the resolution of the curve isn't high enough, crank this up. Tip number two. If you need additional points, select two handles next to each other, right click, subdivide, and if you want even more cuts, the slider will solve your problem. But keep in mind, the less points you have, the smoother the shape looks. Tip number three. You can delete or dissolve vertices or segments with X. Tip number four. Use the mirror modifier. Tip number five. If a part won't be visible on the render, don't waste your time on it. Tip number six. Put together one object from multiple pieces if it is in a weird situation. For example, the dressy top part is behind and the sleeves are in front of the book. And the last tip, like this video to get a better end result. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you how to create the stars easily. Check this out. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for Extra, enable Add Mesh Extra Objects, and then Shift A. You have some new options under the mesh. Extras, Simple Star, and look at that. You can change how many points you want. I want 5. You can adjust the height and the radius as well. But we don't need that right now. Delete this face because it should look 2D, right? Put it in the right spot and add the bevel modifier. Switch to vertices. And don't forget to apply the scale. Change the limit method to weight because I only want the outer vertices to be rounded. Select them and increase the mean bevel weight. Add more segments and you have a great looking star. Every part of this image should be a new object, since it will be easier to animate them individually later on. So when you finish with one layer, switch to object mode and duplicate the shape. Then go to edit mode and delete every point and start drawing the new layer. In this way, you don't have to add and set up a new 2D curve over and over again. Now that you know everything, finish the rest of the image. The layers should be separated with a gap in between them. To make this circle cutout part, add the plane in the back and the circle in the front. In edit mode, select everything, then hit E. Cancel the movement with right click and scale it up. Let's continue with the materials and the lighting. Go to render mode with Z and change the color of the world to white. But it looks grey. Change this to standard to fix the colors. The render engine is Eevee, but you can use cycles too. I won't judge you. Duplicate the reference image and disable the opacity. So you can steal the colors from the original image. Select an object, add the new material. Change the surface to diffuse. Click on it and hit D. To sample the color, hover over this color box with your cursor and hit Hit E, short for eyedropper. Click on the image at the right spot and you have the same color. Roughness doesn't matter. Do this with the rest of the objects. You can drag and drop materials to multiple objects. If you want to add some spice to it, 
change the surface to emission, crank up the strength and enable bloom. And you have a glowing object. I want to add this material to the stars as well, so I can drag and drop it or select every star and click on the moon last. Then hit Ctrl L and link materials. Cool. We need some shadows, no problem. Enable ambient occlusion, adjust the settings. Uncheck balances approximation to get a stronger shadow. If you need some directional shadows as well, not a problem. Add the sun, rotate it however you want. To make the shadow look softer, set the angle to a higher number. You probably noticed the colors got brighter because of the sun. I don't really care about it, but if you do, tweak the colors until they match with the image or fix it in post. Let's animate the scene. First of all, set up a camera. Clear the transformation with Alt G and Alt R. Rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and put it away from the artwork. Adjust the resolution. And I like to change the frame rate to 60 FPS. This way, I can still slow down the footage in post without getting a laggy animation. So if you want to experiment with different speeds or want to sync the visuals with music, you don't need to re-render the whole sequence every time you change something. I always crank up the passepartout. Passepartout, passepartout. Hit G and move the camera back a bit. There you can see the end of the hair. This will be even more visible when it's animated, so put it way behind the cutout. You can change the focal length here if you want to make it look a bit different. Add the timeline and my animation will be 100 frames. Now we're gonna animate the hair with a wave modifier. I want to wave them left and right. And this is not it. In order to do that I have to apply the rotation. But you can't apply anything to a 2D oh curve. No. That's why we have to convert it to a mesh. Select the objects you want to convert. But before converting, duplicate them and put them in a separated collection. And hide it so you can go back to the curves anytime right click convert to mesh and now you can add the wave modifier the waves move up and down by default but i want to move the hair left and right rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees and apply the rotation you see it moves up and down but if you rotate it back by minus 90 degrees the movement is horizontal Perfect, but don't apply the rotation this time. The wave starts from the object's origin point. It should start at the head, so move the origin points down. But how? Right click on the header, enable tool settings, click on options, transform effect only origins. And you can move the origin points on the Z axis with G. After you move them, don't forget to uncheck this checkbox. Now the wave modifier works like charm. Not yet, because three things need to be fixed. First, the hair should look like it's attached to the head. Unless it's a wig, of course, that can fly off sometimes. <laughs> First, let's exclude the part near the head from the wave modifier. Switch to weight paint mode, select the gradient tool, click and drag downwards. Snap to an axis by holding down control. The red color means the wave modifier is 100% applied there. And the blue part isn't affected by the wave modifier at all. A vertex group has been created. Go back to object mode and add your vertex group to the wave modifier. And now the head looks like it's attached to the head. Second, the movement must be subtle. It's not a worm after all. Let me explain the settings. Fall off means the distance after which the waves fade out. It starts from the origin. Lower number gives a short fading. Height changes the height or amplitude of the waves. Width is the distance between the waves. Narrowness changes the distance between the top and the bottom of the wave. It works like a color ramp. Experiment with these sliders until you like the look of the motion. And the third thing, the waves must loop seamlessly. If that's messed up, it can cause physical pain, so be careful. You see the waves start over. It looks really unsatisfying. To loop it, you must tweak the speed and the offset slider until you get frustrated or download my free add-on which makes the waves loop seamlessly automatically. It calculates the perfect speed value from the width of the wave and the animation's length. Whenever you change one of those, click on the button and the waves will loop forever. If you want to create your own add-ons, check out Serpents from my affiliate link below. This add-on is based on calculations I found on a website called Hello Cat Food. If you don't want to download my add-on, type this expression manually into the speed box.
and set the offset to a fairly low number. The mastermind behind this is Antonio Roberts. Check out his Instagram, he's creating some pretty interesting stuff, and he likes cats. Now that the hair loops seamlessly, we can copy the wave modifier to the other objects as well. Select them and select the wavy hair last. Ctrl L, copy modifiers. Fix rotation, rotate them, apply the rotation, rotate them back and done. Uh, it is not supposed to look like that. This is happening because the vertex group is missing. So make a gradient in weight paint mode. Ta-da! Repeat this with the other ones as well and you have a nice looking hair. Now it looks a bit too perfect so add the sprinkle of randomness by changing the offset to a different number. When I created the original animation, I animated the clouds manually, but I just realized the wave modifier can be applied to them too. So convert them, apply the rotation, add the wave modifier, disable these axes, tweak the settings and make the motion loop. Wonderful! That was enough automation, we're gonna animate the stars manually. Go to frame 1 with shift plus left arrow and insert a keyframe with I. We're gonna animate the rotation, so click on that. Go to frame 50, rotate the star on the Y axis and insert another keyframe. Check out if you like it or not. To loop the movement, duplicate the first keyframe with shift D and put it at the last frame with left click. I want to show you something. Create a new window by dragging the corner to the left and change it to graph editor. This curve shows how the star is animated over time. Select the Y axis, hit N, modifiers, add modifier, cycles. This modifier makes the motion repeat. Select every point and hit G plus X to move them on the horizontal axis. Place them somewhere and if you hit play it's still looping. Only the rotation start and end point has changed. But why did I show you this? Because when we apply this animation to the other stars we can offset their movements while still keeping the loop seamless. Let's apply the animation to the other stars by selecting them and selecting the animated one last, but you know this already. Ctrl L, link animation. Now all of them are animated, but they aren't rotating randomly. We just offset them, right? Well, if you select one of the stars and then move the curve and hit play, the animation is still the same for every star. This is happening because the animation is linked. So if you change the animation for this star, the animation changes for all of them because they share the same animation data. To successfully offset them, select the stars, object, relations, make single user, then click on object animation. Now every star has its own animation data, so you can offset them without any problem. They are looping and also rotating randomly. We're done with everything, almost. Let's export this animation so you can show it off. Set the sample count to a lower number. It still looks good with 32 or 16 samples. Set the output location. We are going to export an image sequence. It can be PNG or JPEG, but OpenEXR is the best. Check out this video if you want to know why. Kodak is DWAA. Go to render. Render animation. After it's done, I'm gonna show you two ways how to make a video from an image sequence. The first way is with Blender and the second is with DaVinci Resolve. Let's start with Blender, however I don't recommend it, you'll see why. Open up Blender and click on video editing on the splash screen. Change the resolution and the frame rate. Add your image sequence, select everything with A. Set the end frame to match with the animation's length. File format is FFmpeg video container is MPEG-4 and the quality is perceptually lossless. Add output location and render the animation. The colors look off a bit due to poor quality color conversion. That's why I don't recommend using Blender for exporting videos. Use DaVinci Resolve instead. Go to the Edit tab, select every image with Ctrl A, drag and drop them to the timeline, change the resolution and fix the colors. Right click on the sequence, LUT, VFX IO, linear to sRGB. Go to the Deliver tab, set the file name and location. Video format is MP4. Add to render queue. Render all. Here's a comparison. The Blender version doesn't look like the original. It's less vibrant. Blender, please fix this. If you are still watching, you're the best. Now that your animation is exported, nothing can stop you from sharing it on social media. If you upload it, tag me so I can see what you created. Put the link of this video in the description so anyone who's interested how to make something like this can watch my video. This helps out my channel grow, so thank you. The best one get a shout out on Instagram. I have a Patreon, so if you want to support my work while getting some benefits in return like project files, 3D assets, early access to videos, add-ons and wallpapers, then consider becoming a patron. I'm gonna steal an idea from Curtis Holt. If you are still here, drop this emoji in the comments so I know you watched it through. Thank you, bye bye!
Check out these cool tutorials. I love Blender.